Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and in this video, I want to kind of go through an example of using this perceptron model. And so, you know, this might seem kind of kind of complicated, because I'm, I'm using all this summation and this activation function. This might seem kind of complicated, but let's actually do an example of this. Let's kind of start with a small example, and then we can see how we can uh, scale this up. So in particular, what I want to model with, a, with this perceptron is called an AND gate. And let's just model an AND gate. Perceptron example. So if you remember what AND does is AND, let me, let me actually make our, our grid here. So if you remember AND, what I mean by AND gate is just something that, you know, is similar to in programming an a, an and, and so if you if you remember, if I when I take the and returns one, only if the both of the inputs are also one, and so I can kind of draw this graphically. So if I suppose that this is x one, which is one of my inputs, and this is x two, which is my other input, then I should be able to fill this out. And so here's my zero. And so what what I want you guys to do is to to take a second and see if you can fill out uh, this this graph. And so let let me actually get you started here. So um, let's suppose that uh, green is zero. So I'll just kind of model this as something like being uh, uh, well actually here. So green we'll we'll, we'll kind of keep this simple. So this is, means We'll say this means zero, and this colored circle filled in means one. And so let me get you started. If x1 is zero and x2 is zero, if I take zero and zero, that gets me zero. And so this coordinate here, the origin, is then going to be an, uh, a circle, just an, an, a non filled in circle. And so why don't you, so there are two other things that, or there are three things that you have to fill out right here. So here's, here's a point that you have to fill out, here's a point you have to fill out, and then here's a point here that you have to fill out. Um, well, you know, what if both of these inputs are one? And so why don't you guys take a second and, you know, for each one of these three other points, you figure out whether it should return zero or one, assuming that x1 and x2 are the inputs. So why don't you take a second to uh, fill out this uh, graph, and we'll be right back with the answer. Okay, so if I, if one of these is one and the other is zero, then this should produce zero. At this point here, if you know x2 is 1 but x1 is 0, then this should produce a 0 right here. But if x1 and x2 are both 1, then I can produce a 1 right here. So I'm going to kind of fill this in. And so here is my, here's my graph right here. And so I want to build a perceptron that models this exact thing. And you know, if, if you can see that. What what I ultimately want is like a kind of a way to look at this line here, so that everything here, you know, or I should say this point here is one, and all the points kind of here are are zero. And there's really only like one point here because we're considering only binary values. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this is kind of a line that I want to to create, and so we can build a perceptron model. And so let's you know do our little perceptron model. And then you know, remember we have our G function here, and then we we actually how many how many inputs do we have? Well, we have two. We have x1 and x2. Actually, here here's what I'll do. I'll kind of move this around so that we can uh, look at this a bit better. I'll put it down here. Here's my G, and then I produce some output, and then I have two inputs. I have x1 and x2. Both of these go into now the neuron, but actually what I have is I have this weight, weight one and weight two. And so what what ultimately happens is and then I also have by the way I also have a bias. And so what I want to do is find values for weight one, weight two, and bias B so that when I when these two are one, the output should also be one. But then you know the question you might be asking is, well what's this activation function? Well here I can define it really uh, really quickly. So my activation function G is g of x let's say some input actually let me use some think let me use a completely different character so it's not as confusing 
Um, let's suppose like g of g of a is going to be equal to one if a is greater than zero, and it's going to be equal to zero if a is less than or equal to zero. So this kind of defines our function g. And so what we want to do is take the weighted sum, right? So we do x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus bias, and we apply some g to it, and then we want to produce some value. A might have been a bad choice there, but let's just suppose this you know, equals some value. And so let, let, let's try this for different values. So we have to initialize these values to, to something. And so I suggest let's just initialize everything to like something simple like 1 or 0. Let's just let's initialize everything to 1. So let my bias be 1. Let this weight 1 be 1. Uh, actually, let me use a different color so it's more obvious. Let's the bias equal 1. Let this weight equal 1. Let this other weight equal 1. So now let's try this with different inputs. So suppose that x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 0. Then what's my output? So my output, let's actually, you know, compute this output. So if both of these are 0, we expect the output to also be 0. So let's see what happens. So this is going to be 0. Now this is, let me substitute in values here. It's going to be 0, 0 times 1 times 1 plus 1. So when I do all this sum, I get 0 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1. Remember, I have to take g. So what's g of 1? Well, 1 is greater than 0, so this outputs 1. So right off the bat, we're not at a good start because our value is too high. When we produce that weighted sum, uh, z, we get a value of 1. And when we took g of 1, then we get 1. But that's not the output that we want. We, we want the output of 0 for this, right? So we know that our initial assignments of weights is, is not correct. In fact, it's too high. The, the value is too big. And so uh, what we want to do is find some weight. So we you know, from this, intuitively, we know that we, we should be decreasing you know, some of these values because it's, it's too high already. And so to kind of make this go along a little quicker, I say let's decrease the bias because really when we do this weighted sum, it's really this bias term that we can use to bring the, this weighted sum down. And so let's set the bias uh, equal to uh, 0, for example. So now let's, write, let's try this again. So if my, now when my bias is 0, I get, you know, 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1 plus 0, and that gets me a value of 0. And so then when I apply g of 0, I get, hey, I get 0. So this seems to work for this case. But this is not the only case we should be checking. We should be checking all these other cases. So now let's try 1, 1. So I can do 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 0, and what does that get me? Well, that gets me, you know, a value of 2. And so when I do this computation, then when I apply g of 2, well, 2 is greater than 0, so I get 1. Okay, so almost done. Now let's try some other cases. So let's try where one of these is 0. So 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 0, and so this should be equal to 0, right? And so let's you know, try this again. So we get a value of 1, but wait a minute, g of 1 is equal to 1. So this isn't quite right again. And so again, the value is too high. So we need to decrease our bias again. For just the sake of simplicity, let's, it makes intuitive sense to decrease the bias and not these weights um, because, you know, we're considering this global uh, parameter. So anyway, bias of 0 isn't quite right. So Let's decrease it again. So let me change my bias again. And uh, I'm just going to jump right to uh, the answer. Let's make our bias uh, minus 1.5. Let's try recomputing this again. So now let me, you know, compute this. Let's do these computations again here. So now we have, you know, let me kind of get rid of all this stuff here. So let's try it with all of our our values here and so this would be 1 times 1 plus 0 times 1 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 and minus 1.5 and so 
let's kind of see what we get here. So let, let's try it in all these cases. So 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0 minus 1.5 is going to be minus 1.5. And that's actually below 0. And so when we apply g to it, then we get, oh, let me just use this uh, arrow here. So then when we apply g to it, we get 0. And that's exactly what we expect because this value is less than 0. Now let's try this. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times 1 is 1, so it's 2, minus 1.5 is going to be 0 0.5. When I do 0 0.5, then I get a value of 1, and that's exactly what we expect. So now, now let's try the other two cases. So this is going to be equal to 1, one well, 1 minus 1.5 is going to be minus 0 0.5, and that's below 0, and so I output 0. And then same for this. This is also going to be minus 0 0.5, and then I output a 0. So these, so it turns out that this orientation of parameters is the right answer, where we have weight 1 equals 1, weight 2 equals uh, weight 2 equals 1, and then the bias is minus 1.5. So it seems that th that this orientation of parameters works well for this AND gate. And remember that this works well for the, the AND gate, so if you this won't work for other gates. We'll have to change this if we want this working with other gates. But this is kind of an example to show you how this uh, how this works. And so really quickly, you know, uh, let's so anyway, I'm just gonna I'll stop right here and I'm gonna kinda give you some motivation that moves on to how what happens when we scale these up. So in this video, we built a working AND gate using a perceptron, using a single perceptron. By setting these weights in this bias, we can get a working, uh, a working AND gate. And this kind of the goal is to find out what values of weights and bias produce the correct output. And so we found through you know trial and error basically that weight one should be one, weight two should be one, and the bias should be minus one point five. So we have these single we have the single perceptron, but now the question is, well, what happens when we scale this up? Let's suppose, you know, let's use more neurons, let's have them oriented in layers, and let's have more layers. So uh, the question is, what happens when we take this single perceptron and expand it out? We add more perceptrons, and we kind of construct our first uh, neural network called a multi-layer perceptron.